through practices such as unnecessary medical tests, scans, and incorrect diagnosis aimed at unfairly generating revenue for the facilities. Uh, the second part, Mr. Speaker, sir, is has the government conducted an inquiry into this matter, and if so, could the Cabinet Secretary of Health table the report on its findings? Lastly, what measures has the government put in place to ensure accountability by healthcare facilities and to provide compensation to victims of medical insurance fraud? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Uh, Madam CS, can you answer the question? Thank you very much, Speaker and uh, Honorable Senators. It is always a pleasure to come to the Senate to appraise the Senate on uh, matters in the Ministry of Health. And I'm happy to respond to this uh, question that has been raised by the Honorable uh, Senator of uh, Kisumu, Professor Ojenda. And uh, Honorable Speaker, I would like to request that after I respond to the question raised by Professor Ojenda, if you may allow me to also appraise the House on the ongoing crisis that we have at the Ministry of Health. Uh, uh, Honorable CS, I'll give guidance that uh, you first answer the question, and then I'll give you an opportunity to understanding under 51C6C. Uh, to give that statement. So first we dispense of the question by S Senator Ogenda, avoiding the matter of the strike so that we can give the, the CS that opportunity. And then after the, the, the statement that she has, I can open to the, I will open to the senators maybe to ask a few questions on that particular matter. So proceed, Madam CS. Thank you, Honorable Members. The question was for I to confirm that there is widespread medical insurance fraud that is perpetrated by health facilities in Kenya, and particularly within the private health sector, through practices such as unnecessary medical tests, scans, incorrect diagnosis, aimed at unfairly generating revenue for the facilities. Uh, Honorable Speaker and members, the issue of medical insurance fraud committed by health facilities in Kenya, including the private sector, is indeed a serious concern that has received attention from the Ministry of Health, regulatory authorities, and enforcement agencies. There have been reported cases of facilities engaging in fraudulent practices to unfairly generate revenue, such as impersonations, raising fake claims for patients who never received any service, ordering unnecessary tests or procedures, providing incorrect diagnosis, and inflating bills submitted to insurance providers. These fraudulent activities not only harm patients by subjecting them to unnecessary medical interventions, but also lead to financial losses for insurance com uh, companies and undermine the integrity of the healthcare system. Consequently, the Ministry of Health, the National Health Insurance Fund, and the Kenya Medical Practitioner and Dentist Council have taken action to address these issues, including suspending facilities found guilty of engaging in fraudulent practices. Currently, the prevalence of medical fraud as per external actual analysis stands at 20%. It is important for stakeholders, including insurance providers, regulatory bodies, investigative bodies, and law enforcement agencies to collaborate in identifying investigating bodies and law enforcement agencies to collaborate and identify investigating and prosecuting individuals and facilities involved in insurance fraud. By enforcing strict regulations, conducting thorough audits, and promoting transparency and accountability in healthcare delivery, we can collectively work towards combating fraudulent activities and safeguarding the interests of patients and insurance beneficiaries. The second question, has the government conducted an inquiry into this matter? And if so, could the Cabinet Secretary table the report of its findings? I wish to respond as follows, Honorable Speaker and members. I want to confirm 
that the Ministry of Health, the National Health Insurance Fund, and the Kenya Medical Practitioner and Dentist Council have been actively addressing cases of medical fraud within the healthcare sector. Through joint efforts and investigations, several facilities have been identified and subsequently suspended for engaging in fraudulent activities that compromise patient care and violate ethical standards. I would like to note that authorities have indeed taken steps to investigate and address instances of medical insurance fraud. Efforts have been made to scrutinize the practices of healthcare facilities, assess compliance with regulations, and hold to account those found to be involved in fraudulent schemes that are detrimental to both patients and insurance providers. There are ongoing investigations by the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, the Director, uh, Directorate of Criminal Investigations, involving 10 healthcare providers currently suspended by the National Hospital Insurance Fund Board. I have annexed the list on my response. As we collectively strive to uphold the integrity of the healthcare system and protect the welfare of patients and insurance beneficiaries, I encourage continued collaboration among stakeholders, effective enforcement of regulations, and clear communication to promote trust and accountability in healthcare delivery. Question three, what measures has the government put in place to ensure accountability by healthcare facilities and to provide compensation to the victims of medical insurance fraud? Yeah. Speaker and honorable members, the government of Kenya has implemented and is working on various measures to enhance accountability and combat medical fraud within healthcare facilities. Some of the efforts that the government has put in place is health facility sensors, and this we did uh, last year at, uh, in August. The government conducted a comprehensive census of health facilities to create a database that facilitates the monitoring and regulation of healthcare services. This, initiatives, this initiative aims to identify and verify facilities to ensure compliance with standards and detect any unauthorized fraudulent practices. The second uh, uh, step or measure that we have taken is repealing of the National Health Insurance Act of 1998. The, the decision to repeal the act and the enactment of the Social Health Insurance Act 2023 is a strategic move by the government to strengthen regulatory frameworks and enhance oversight mechanisms within the healthcare sector. By enhancing the Social Health Insurance Act, the government will introduce updated provisions that safeguard against fraudulent activities, improve transparency, and enforce accountability measures for healthcare facilities and providers. Honorable Speaker and members, I would like to thank you because this House participated in enactment of those laws during the process. The Ministry really appreciates the Senate for the effort that they put in. Honorable Speaker and members, we have also uh, procured, we are in the process of procurement of a smart digital system. The government is in the process of acquiring a smart digital system designed to, to combat fraud activities. This signifies, signifies a proactive approach to addressing malpractices in healthcare delivery. The sophisticated digital system will streamline data management, facilitate real-time monitoring of healthcare transactions, and employ advanced analytics to detect anomalies or irregularities that may indicate fraudulent behavior. The system will be integrated with approved clinical guidelines to ensure patient management is standardized. Fourth is enhanced monitoring and enforcement. The government has intensified efforts to monitor healthcare facilities and enforce compliance with regulations. Enhancement of oversight through frequent inspections audits and performance of evaluations is going to enable regulatory bodies and the social health uh, authority to hold facilities accountable for adherence to ethical standards, quality care, financial and transparency, thereby reducing the likelihood of fraudulent activities. In public awareness and reporting mechanism. The government is also focused on raising public awareness about medical fraud and encouraging individuals to report any suspicious experiences of fraudulent activity practices in healthcare facilities. This will be done by promoting transparency, accountability, whistleblower protection, and the government will empower the public 
to play an active role in combating fraud and ensuring accountability within the health sector. Regarding compensation of uh, victims of medical fraud, the Ministry of Health and its agencies are not expected to compensate any victims of medical insurance fraud. However, the Insurance Regulator Authority may provide more detail if there have been compensations of victims of medical insurance fraud. Honorable Speaker and members, I submit. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable CS. Uh, Professor Jenda, do you have any supplementary question? You have an opportunity to ask it too, but if you don't have, you are satisfied, good enough. Um, Honorable Speaker, I think given the response um, to the questions that are satisfactory, or I I'm satisfied with the responses, uh, the only follow-up question, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, would be uh, for the CS to explain to the House the intended processes that underline the implementation of the Social Health Insurance Act um, and whether the frameworks, everything has been put into place to ensure that uh, the repeal of the NHIF Act 1998 uh, will not affect uh, uh, Kenyan population. Let me put it that way. It will not affect those who are previously, who are beneficiaries of the framework of the processes under the Act. I don't know if you can answer that one. Thank you, Speaker and Honorable Members. Yes, indeed, the Ministry has a process for implementing the Social Health Insurance Act. And for us starters, the Ministry did gazette a transitional committee that has experts to ensure seamless transition from NHIF to social health. The committee has been sitting for the last three months. It has developed a roadmap on what needs to be done in terms of implementation. Additionally, the Ministry worked on regulations for operationalizing the Social Health uh, Insurance Act. And indeed, the, the, the regulations were already approved and gazetted. So we are in the process of uh, finalizing with the Transitional Committee to ensure that all matters are taken care of. And I want to assure the House that one thing that the Transitional Committee is ensuring is that the Kenyan should not actually notice that there has been a change from NHIF to Social Health Authority. The services that are being provided will continue to the time that then Social Health Authority takes over from NHIF. And some of the things that they are doing is auditing of the existing assets and liabilities so that they are taken over by the Social Health Authority. So, Speaker and Honorable Members, I want to confirm that we have a process that is ongoing. We have a roadmap. The Transitional Committee is working. As a minister, I meet with them after every two weeks so that I get appraised of the process. And our intention and our plan is that from the 1st of July, then we shall have completely moved to Social Health Authority. Thank you, Honorable Speaker and Members. Thank you. Uh, as I guided the uh, Honorable Senators, we stick to this particular uh, question, not touching on the strike, so that I uh, will give the CS opportunity to, to put the Senate and the country. So if you have an, a different angle, then I can give Senator Muma Muyaka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. Uh, welcome, Madam C.S. Nahumicha, uh, to the Senate. Now, my question is related to the repeal of the NHIF Act. Uh, you have explained uh, the good intentions and the plans you have in place to have a smooth transition, transition uh, uh, to the new system. Uh, I wanted to ask whether you are aware that many Kenyans are still paying NHIF but not receiving services. We have many Kenyans whose NHIF cards are not being honored in many 
hospitals and they are actually stranded. Are you aware of that and what are you doing about that? Thank you, Honorable Speaker and uh, Senator Muma. Yes, I am aware that Kenyans are still paying NHIF, and that is the way it is intended to be, that payments continue to be made and ensure access to services. Speaker and Honorable Members, I would like to take responsibility that for sure there has been disruption of services, but not stoppage of services. And the disruption of services is because of the unpaid claims by NHIF to health facilities. And this has been occasioned by a delay of exchequer release to NHIF. But I want to confirm that NHIF and together with the ministry, we have been having engagements with most of the facilities which are around the faith-based facilities, we've had a meeting with them. The rural health providers, we have had a meeting with them. The private providers, we have had a meeting with them and given a commitment that they should continue to provide services because the claims will be honored. Speaker and honorable members, I would like to inform the House that it is really natural that most of the facilities, due to the transition, then they would be a little bit not sure whether their claims are going to be paid or not. And some are taking that drastic action of not providing services. But as a ministry, we are, going, we are continuing to engage them. And as I said earlier, one of the things that the Transitional Committee is doing is to verify the claims, to verify the assets and liabilities of NHIF. So, Speaker and Honourable Members, I want to assure facilities that there is no cause of alarm. They do not need to disrupt facilities. That once they have provided services, their claims have been verified and reconciled, they are going to be paid once resources are available. I submit, Speaker and Honourable Members. Thank you. Uh, Sen Senator Chute Mohamed. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, mine is not uh, uh, something like a question, but I wanted to express my gratitude towards the CS, and I want to take this opportunity to thank the CS and the team, specifically the Director General, on uh, the support they've given us during and the time we had sponsors from Lord Mahavir Swami followers and giant group of uh, giant group Twiga on prosthetic limbs provided by Narayan Sewa Santa based in Udaipur, India. Honorable Speaker, we had camps in April and September 2023. We had another camp in January 2024, and the next one will be held in June 2024. Honorable Speaker, so far, to date, over 2,500 persons have benefited from the limbs that were provided by the organization. The camps are in Nairobi, in Meru, Honorable Speaker, your county, and also Mombasa, Kisumu, and Kisi. This year, the organization intends... Oh, Senator Chute, what is your question? Yeah. Uh, leading our statement to appreciate the uh, ministry. Yes, I'm trying so to... What is your question? I want, I want the people of Kenya to know that we appreciate what the CS is doing and this organization also. No, ask you a excuse question. Me, excuse, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Can you protect me from these guys? The speaker is asking uh, a question. All the members, all the members. So... All the members. And, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, this is You have an opportunity to, to, to do that statement even later. It's kind of because of time, just ask the question and then... Honorable Oscar, the as I finish, I want Kenyans to know that what the Cabinet Secretary and his, our team are doing, and this is very important for me and most of the Kenyans, and also, Honorable Speaker, I hope and believe that the CS is capable of solving the dispute between the doctors and her ministry. And thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, as and son.
that you I give you some good guidance and now you are still uh, diverting from my advice. So let us, it, there was no question at all. So, so let us have uh, Senator Nyonka, Richard. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First of all, I would like to say that C.S. Nakumicha is uh, somebody I've known in my previous life and I'm happy to see her here. The question, Madam C.S., that I'm asking you is this. The NIGF Act has been repealed. You have several health facilities and health centers all over the country. Some of them who have not been paid for the last five years, some of them have not been paid for the last three or whatever number of years. And what many of these Kenyans are asking is whether you have done an audit. And this audit is meant to give you the list of the outfits or health facilities or companies that have been providing these health services to our people. And if so, is it possible for you, for the simple purpose of accountability and transparency, to give the lists within the regions where these companies come from so that by the time you are transitioning to the social health authority and you are transitioning with the health healthcare fund, my suggestion, Mr. Speaker, is that this would make it easy for these Kenyans, many of them who are complaining and saying how they've never been paid and they are being taken, their things are being taken by auctioneers, and many of them have actually be, been disenfranchised. I hope the CS will be able to look at it and give us an answer on that. Uh, okay, just let me get two more, then the CS can respond. What is your point of order, Senator Kifokiambu uh, County, Karungo? Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I am rising on a point of order 51C6C that you had indicated that you might give the CS permission uh, to talk on a, to give a statement on whatever is going. Some of us, we do have questions to ask that. So my question is, or seeking your indulgence, you probably give the CS this particular moment to give a statement. Probably the questions that we want to ask are in that statement. I give a very clear guidance to Senator Karungo Dango that uh, I wanted to give a few senators to ask supplementary questions on a subject matter on this question. And then I'll give the CS an opportunity still now to make a statement. I don't know whether you are the one who is in a hurry or the CAs or myself, and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Senator Amanda Jackson. Um, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I'd like to ask a supplementary question to the Cabinet Secretary in regard to reimbursements of NHIF, particularly to public facilities. And in this question, Honorable Speaker, as a community, we visited Bagadi Hospital and the, the defunct NHIF owes them a lot of money and they are unable to deliver service. The other critical facility is the Nairobi Funeral Home that has a generator that has not been working for two years. Reimbursements from NHIF, Honorable Speaker, would have sorted, including Isiolos Pro. So we would like to know, in the transition period process, what is the department doing to make sure that the payments are being made? And what is the ministry to serve as a mother ministry doing to pay the debts they owe to the defunct NHIF, including State Department of Public Service, for wipe amounting to millions of money to make sure that those debts are paid before the process, the new process begins? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Yeah, Madam says, as you answer that, that is a question which was asked by another member. So it is, and Honorable Senators, this is a very uh, core question that is in the use of many senators. So maybe you, you give a comprehensive answer to that so that we don't repeat again, Madam. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. On the question that was uh, asked by Senator Onyonka uh, about the repealing of NHIF Act. I think it is uh, now clear that we are in the transition phase. And yes, as a ministry, we acknowledge that there are claims dating back to five years 
three years, and even others that are longer than the five years. What we have done as a ministry is one of the reasons that the act was, uh, the new act was put in place. One, we have claims that looked ridiculous. We have claims that on first value would not be validated. And from the research that we did, we have claims that actually point to the first issue that I responded to of fraud in medical insurance. So what we have done, uh, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, is that the Transitional Committee, one of the TORs, terms of reference that they have, is to do a proper reconciliation of the claims. They have a subcommittee where we have received experts from Treasury, we have received a, a representative from the Office of Auditor General to be able to verify those claims so that they can be paid. And I want to assure the, the House that once the Transitional Committee has confirmed that a claim is legitimate for payment, it shall be taken over by the Social Health Authority. I also want to confirm that there is a special committee, National Audit Committee, that was put in place by His Excellency the President, and it is supposed to be looking into all pending bills. So there are some huge bills that then will be moved to the Special Audit Committee, chaired by the former uh, Auditor General, Mr. Ouko, to look into the long outstanding pending bills. Some of those will be verified there. But I want to assure the House that these claims, so long as verified, reconciled, they will be taken over by SHA. Having said that, I also want to confirm that payment of claims is a continuous exercise. So NHIF has been continuing to pay those claims that have been reconciled and verified. In the last year, a total of 36 billion was paid out to claims. The second question about reimbursement of claims to public facilities that has been asked by Senator Mandago of Wasingishu, who is also the chair of the health committee in the Senate, is that indeed it is true that there are many outstanding claims that are yet to be paid to public facilities. And these outstanding claims are not unique just to the public facilities. We even have faith-based facilities that have outstanding claims. We have private facilities that have outstanding claims. And as a ministry, this is a matter that we have brought to the cabinet's attention because we see it standing in our way as a risk in the transition. And following the bringing of this matter to the cabinet, a discussion was held last week between my ministry, the Ministry of Treasury, chaired by His Excellency the President, and Treasury was asked to look for resources for us to start paying claims. And I want to confirm that yesterday, my principal secretary in charge of medical services did receive information from Treasury that they are actually looking for 5.5 billion to be released to the ministry to start paying the outstanding claims. Thank you, Chair and Honorable Members. We are going to the statement at quarter yeah. to noon. Uh, thank, thank, more senators, then we go to the statement from the CS on the previous yeah. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I take this opportunity to welcome the, the CS uh, for health, for coming to, our, to the Senate. Mr. Speaker, I hope in her statement she's going to tell us something about the strike of the doctors. But, Mr. Speaker, uh, my question is uh, on the, the card, the defunct or the outgoing NHIF cards. Mr. Speaker, these cards, uh, when issued to beneficiaries, they are asked to specify the clinics and the hospitals where they wish to be treated. And Mr. Speaker, you specify two. And when you specify two, and supposing you are for, uh, 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 a civil servant, say a police officer, you are posted to Nairobi, your family is in the rural areas there, you have specified the hospital where they go. When you are in Nairobi here, you are only allowed to specify two. 
So you specify those, the, the, those two are dispensary and are a hospital where your family goes. Mr. Speaker, it is very, very inconvenient. I hope that the new system is going to address that so that the cards allow you to access facilities uh, of certain class or standard and you can go anywhere in the country and access yeah. those facilities. That's you don't okay. have to specify only two. That's okay. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I hope that yeah, is going to be addressed. To the you can uh, she will respond after, after I give Senator Omar Sheikh Mali, Maliam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, my question goes to uh, CS. Is about uh, Edio Athia Medical. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that is under Minister of uh, Education, which contracted NHIF to offer medical to students. Mr. Speaker, I wanted to ask the CES, what is your intervention on this uh, uh, termination of the contract? Because most of the kids, there are many kids who are stuck and abroad for medical treatment. So as a Minister of Health, what is your intervention on that? Uh, Senator Zufuna, your own intervention. You have a point of order or maybe you are queuing to contribute to another matter? I had, I had a supplementary question, Speaker. On, red, on HIF? On NHIF, yes. Can they do within, uh, you know, you, you shoot straight within one minute, maybe then she can answer. I will do so. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to discourage the Cabinet Secretary for, from conflating and including other things in her answer to specific questions. The question by Senator Mandago was specific to money that is owed to public institutions. So in her answer, when she goes around and includes religious institutions and so on and so forth, I think she's conflating issues. We want her to tell us. In Nairobi, the public... The same question you're asking now. That, that's the, 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 the question, Speaker. Okay, the public ask... institutions in Nairobi, our level four hospitals in Nairobi, the four of them, Mr. Speaker, are all accumulative 700 million shillings between Linda Mama and NHIF. What she needs to tell us, because these are not covered by the questions of fraud that we... She spoke about in the private institutions. She needs to tell us when she will be paying the public institutions, including the four level fours in Nairobi. When will she be paying? Don't tell us about the religious institutions. CS, uh, uh, sorry, Senator Sifuna. And the CSA, they have now five billion on the way to pay these bills. Yeah, but that's a story. Because I don't want us to continue. That's a story, Honorable uh, uh, Speaker, that included other institutions that have to go through the vetting process, verification process that she spoke Senator, about. Senator Zwolle, is that sure that Nairobi will be covered? Senator, uh, speaker, why, why don't you allow the answer to come from the witness, Mr. Chair? Because you are not the Minister for Health. It's Senator Zwolle. Senator Zwolle, you know we cannot have two speakers at the same time. You know that. Why is she, why is she have a standing? Is it, no, you cannot direct, direct your questions to the, to the CS. You know, you know what is special in this, in this house. You should just abide by the laws of the, of the debate. Understanding on us, Senator Sifun. With a lot of respect. Madam CS. Answer the three questions, Madam CS. Time is not with Thank us. you, uh, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. I would like to respond to the question uh, asked by Senator Uburu regarding the NHIF card. And indeed, it is true that the current NHIF card limited members and required them to choose specific facilities where they will be attended to. And that is one of the flaws that we took into consideration in coming up with the Social Health Authority Act. And under the Social Health Authority, this is no longer a requirement. A member is not required to choose a facility. Further, we have gone ahead 
to do digitization of health services and health facilities. We are ensuring that all health facilities are integrated, and this allows for portability of patient data for ease of referral. That should a Kenyan wish to seek services from any health facility within the borders of the country, then they will find their data available in that health facility that they wish to be attended to. Furthermore, we have put facilities into a primary care network, and this is to ensure that then services and proper referral of services is done, that a, a, a Kenyan can move from one level of service to the other one without limitation. Speaker and the honorable members, on the issue of EduAfia, I want to confirm that under the current Social Health Act, the ministry has provided a base cover, and this base cover is comprehensive with a, benef a benefit package that covers everyone. We all have to agree that EduAfia was specific to students. These students come from families. These students have parents, have guardians. So under the EduAfia, all these people are being covered that it did not make sense to have one small cover just covering the student. We needed to have the parent, we needed to have the, the guardian covered. And that is why under the Social Health Authority, the cover is for the whole family. It does not uh, discriminate and say, this is for a student, this is for Linda Mama. No, the cover is for Mama, the cover is for the student, the cover is for Baba, the cover is for the whole Jami. On the third question, which uh, Honorable Sefuna has asked regarding the payment for Nairobi County. Speaker and Honorable Members, I would like to confirm that as a ministry, it concerns us about all health facilities, public facilities, faith-based facilities, private facilities. All these have to be paid by NHIF. And I want to confirm, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, that NHIF has a process of payment. And the process of payment does not exclude other facilities depending on where it belongs. It is a process that one, requires that the claim is verified. Whether the claim is from a public facility, a private facility, or a faith-based facility, it has to be verified. Once verified and reconciled, then it goes to payment. So I also want to confirm that as I had indicated earlier, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, we have had a delay of exchequer. That has given rise to the many huge bills that are being experienced across the country. And I have gone ahead to confirm that indeed we have received confirmation from Treasury that resources are going to be released this week for, pay for payment of claims. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I submit. Thank you. Uh, Senator Mwinyihaji Mohamed. Asante Mwishima Speaker. Langu ni kumuliza waziri kwamba kuna malubukizi ya malipo kwa zahanati na vituo vya afya ambao yameendelea kwa muda mrefu. Na majibu yake Mwishima Speaker hayajaridhishwa kwa sababu hajasema pesa zinazodaiwa ni ngapi na zitalipwa vipi. Kwa sababu tumeona wakati NHIF ilipokuwa inafanya kazi malipo yalikuwa hayaendi. Na sasa tunatoka kwa NHIF tunakwenda kwa shirika jipya. Tunataka ueleze bunge hili ni mipango gani ambayo umepanga madeni kwanza ni pesa ngapi na pili una mipango gani ya kulipa madeni hayo. Kwa sababu usiswambi ukisema tu kwamba yatalipwa yatalipwa. Hiyo ni mambo ambayo ni alifu ulela ulela mheshimiwa speaker. Asante. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, my question is with regards to the government program of uh, Linda Mama. I know that um, Waziri has uh, clarified that there's a, um, a, a cover that takes care of the whole family. However, under Linda Mama, which was a program initiated uh, under NHIF, 
uh, issues on maternal health care were actually uh, specified. For instance, complications after birth and things like that. This new um, cover that uh, you're saying is the alternative of Linda Mama, does it still cater for the specific maternal health care issues that were being taken care of under Linda Mama? Uh, as well, if you could also clarify, the Kenya Kwanza government came in uh, under, we signed a women charter. And under the women charter, we had promised that we will be giving um, all uh, mothers who have just given birth, that we would give them free sanitary towels, and would also give them uh, three months or six, I, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's three months worth of uh, diapers, free uh, diapers, disposable diapers for, uh, to their children. This particular issue, which is supposed to be covered as well, I would have thought under Linda Mama, it seems to have disappeared somewhere. Could we get a clarification on that as well? Thank you. Uh, Senator Sosi, and then she will answer those three, and then we'll go to the statement direct. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, mine is uh, in relation to the third part of the question. It talks about accountability by the health uh, facilities. Uh, and uh, while I appreciate the response by the Cabinet Secretary, we like to know uh, the list of the health facilities which have been suspended or terminated under NHIF and the reasons of the same. I'm, I'm asking this, uh, Mr. Speaker, because I have been made aware that there could have been some discrimination in this process and some unfair practices. And I have a specific case uh, that has been brought to me by my constituent of a hospital by the name Meswo Medical Services, NHIF code number 0013. One five two, where the audit was done in April 2022, and the results of audit indicated that there was no problem. But only a few months later, this hospital has been suspended from NHIF. And this is a big investment, Mr. Speaker, of a 86 bed level four facility. Uh, owned by my constituent in Kapsabed town. And uh, the complainant says there is no issue. It's just a matter of uh, unfair practices that was applied to her hospital. Can the CS explain this scenario and uh, uh, respond to uh, the issues that uh, s there may have been some unfair practices in uh, suspending some of the facilities from NHIF, particularly Madam this CS. one. I don't know, Senator, as you know, when you ask a specific question for that, in that manner, Senator Sosi, maybe if the CS has no particular answer now, you can also, maybe it is a statement yes. which can really support your argument which can go to the committee for investigations. But uh, she'll answer all the questions asked, and then we'll go to the statement. Thank you, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. On the question raised by Senator Haji, Faki, sorry, my apologies, regarding the payment of claims, I want to confirm that the ministry is seized of the figures. The total money owed to NHIF is 30 billion. And out of this 30 billion, Senator, 22 billion is from government institutions. And that is why I stand here confidently saying that, having had the discussion chaired by His Excellency the President, the Ministry of Treasury, and Ministry of Health, there is a plan for release of resources, which I have confirmed that we are going to receive this week the PS actually got confirmation yesterday of the 8.5 billion. And this money is going to be put to prudent use of payment of claims. 
On the second question from Senator Gloria regarding Linda Mama, as I had responded earlier, that we had Linda Mama, yes. But for the benefit of the understanding of honorable members, Linda Mama was taking care of antenatal, taking care of delivery, and postnatal for only two visits after delivery. But what we now have under the Social Health Authority is to take care not just for the uh, uh, antenatal and delivery and postnatal, but is to take care of the family even after that. We all know, Honorable Speaker and members, that the people who end up in hospital most are children under five. So you can imagine Linda Mama was only paying up to two visits after delivery. But now under the Social Health Authority, these people are going to be taken care of. And I also want to clarify, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, that where a family, where an individual does not have capacity to pay, where an individual is vulnerable, the government has committed to pay for individuals. Then the rest of Kenyans who have capacity to pay will pay according to their uh, level of income. On the question of Senator Osotsi regarding the list of health facilities, I would like to respond that in my response earlier that has been provided, we have provided an annexed list of the facilities that has been suspended. But also to confirm that audit is a continuous exercise. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, audit is based on a specific criteria. So I doubt that it will go out looking for an individual. But I would like to pick out on the facility that Honorable Osotsi has given and ask my team so that we go and specifically look at that facility to verify what were the issues under that facility. And we shall be able to provide a response to Honorable Osotsi. I submit, Speaker and Honorable Members. On the issue of pads and diapers, I want to agree, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, that as a mother, I want to confirm that those two are very, very important. But as it is now, we do not have resources in the budget for those facilities. But we are going to push for them, for provision of them. Should there be resources, I want to agree that those are items that should actually be provided. But I also want to confirm that I know that pads are being provided by the Ministry of Gender. So with the, with the diapers, that is something that we can pick up with the ministry and try and get resources to avail them. I submit, Chair. Uh, the Senator Homal Sheikh, the, you end up another clarification because your, your question you feel was not answered and adequate. And the Chairman Hill, Chairman Hill, just wait a bit. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my question is uh, about. Uh, those kids who are stuck in abroad. Because I know social uh, health care will take care of all household, yes. But uh, the contract of EDU was uh, terminated 1st of December 2023. Since then, up to today, which is social health care is not inactive, not yet. So what is the, process, what is the intervention now? for the students who are stuck in abroad, and there are some also who are using the same scheme to, to, uh, for the treatment here in Kenya. Okay, Senator Mandago, one minute. Uh, Honorable Speaker, you know this is a house of record. Uh, in the first response, the government secretary indicated that they were expecting 5.5 .5 billion from National Treasury. In our second response, she has indicated 8.5 billion. So which is the figure we are expecting to be released from National Treasury so that we have the correct uh, on record, honorable speaker? Senator Ambo, less than 60 seconds. <laughs> uh, speaker, I don't know why that applies to me and not to other people, but that's fine, the speaker. Uh, the, the question that, uh, that the Senator Gloria asked was a very important question. It's actually a manifesto question. A government in office on the basis of a specific 
pledge to the women of this country. Now the minister on the floor of the Senate has said that perhaps the government has moved on or away from the position that then that pledge that was made to the women of Kenya, as the government has moved away from that pledge and now they can wait for pads and, and other things from other sources. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Madam Sears. Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. On the question raised by Senator Omar regarding the students who are stranded, I first of all want to confirm, Honorable Speaker and Members, that indeed the Ministry did give notification to the Ministry of Education that this uh, particular edwafia was going to come to an end. The Ministry of Education was supposed to inform its members of the end date of the, of the Edu Afia. And the reason why there was an end date, it was actually end of a contract. So it is expected that then the Ministry of Education should have made alternative arrangements. I have had a, a, a meeting with my colleague, Cabinet Secretary for Education, and we said, should they need the service to be covered for those who are still in India, then they need to write to the Ministry so that they give an undertaking of payment of the premium so that then that, that can be covered. So far, we have not received a letter of extension from the Ministry of Education. We have not received an undertaking for National Health uh, Insurance Fund to be able to take care of those bills. On the uh, clarity raised by Senator Mandago, I want to acknowledge that yes, I did speak about 5.5 and I have also talked about 8.5 billion. I want to clarify as follows. 5.5 billion is going to come from National Treasury. 3 billion is going to come from NHIF from its reserves. So total, we are going to have 8.5 billion shillings to take care of payment of claims. On the last question and concern from Senator Wambua, I would like to confirm that Kenya Kwanzaa government has not moved away from its manifesto. Implementation of a manifesto is a continuous exercise. This government is in office for the next five years. So we have a plan on implementation of the Kenya Kwanzaa plan. I submit, Chair and Honorable Members. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, Honorable Senators. Honorable Senators. We are now... Honourable Senators. Senator Gloria, Honourable. Honourable Members. Honourable Senators. Honourable Senators. Senator Chalagay, you're out of order. So, and uh, standing on the Vista 1C, 6C, I want to give the Honorable CS this opportunity to issue a statement on the, the strike, the doctor strike. So, you have this opportunity, Madam CS. Senators will have an opportunity still to. To, to, to issue or to ask any clarifications after she's done with the statement. Honourable. Senator Veronica. I would request you give us a guidance as to whether we are getting a chance to still ask the important yes, questions. Yes, we'll ask. There is a, we have no problem with Regarding that. the question she has been answering. Yeah, so because other also senators want to ask the, the issue on the strike, Yes. We are open that you can still ask on HIF, NHIF, okay. so there is no problem. Most, thank you. So, Honorable CS. Thank you, Honorable Speaker and uh, Honorable Members. We are all aware of the ongoing crisis in the country. On the 6th of March, 2024, the Kenya Medical Practitioner and Dentist Union issued a seven-day strike notice of intended industrial action, citing failure of both the national and county governments in implementing the 2017 CBA. The union raised 19 issues in their, in their, uh, in their notice. We did have a meeting as a ministry with the union 
to forestall the strike. However, what we agreed on, the union did not feel like it was adequate, and they proceeded and commenced on the strike on the 13th of March, 2024. Following that notice, the Kenyatta National Hospital moved to court seeking stay orders against the industrial action to prevent interruption of services in health facilities, an interruption which would endanger the lives, safety, and health of Kenyans. The Employment and Labor Relations Court on the 15th of March 2024 ordered that a whole of nation approach be instituted towards resolving the instant long-running dispute in Kenya's health sector and for the purpose of achieving a sustainable solution. The ongoing negotiation and conciliation to incorporate the Head of Public Service, the Cabinet Secretary for National Treasury, the Cabinet Secretary for Public uh, uh, Service, the Cabinet Secretary for Labor and Social Protection, the Salaries and Remuneration Commission, the Public Service Commission, the Council of Governors, each of the 47 county governors, the Kenya Federation of Employers, and the Central Organization of Trade Unionists, and all national referral hospital, and all the parties to the suit, and the negotiation conciliations to seek to comprehensively address all grievances leading to the strike. As part of its mandate, the Hall of Nation Committee has reviewed all the 19 issues raised in the Notice of Industrial Action and classified them into priority areas. Six of the issues that were raised were classified to relate to the national government, while none, uh, nine of the issues were classified to relate to the county government. Four issues fell under concurrent mandates of both the two levels of government. Equally, as that process was going on, the Kenya Union of Clinical Officers on 25th of March 2024 issued a strike notice citing 10 demands. The ministry went ahead to have a meeting with the Union of Clinical Officers with the intention to forestall the strike. And of the 10 uh, demands from the Union of Clinical Officers, they narrowed down to two main demands. And that is failure of both levels of government to obey a court order that directed the government to finalize a CBA with KUKO and register the CBA in court. The second main demand was failure to enhance the risk allowance paid to clinical officers. The union wants the risk allowance to be increased from the current 3,000 to 15,000 shillings per month. And this will apply to all the clinical officers within the country. I would like to clarify that of the 14,000 clinical officers in the country, only 158 are in the purview of the national government. In the same breath, on the 26th March 2024, the Kenya Union of Medical Laboratory Officers issued a strike notice citing failure by the government to formulate and sign a recognition agreement with the union. The second issue is failure by government to confirm to permanent and pensionable all UHC staff COVID, all UHC staff, COVID-19 employees UHC interns and national TB and disease and lung disease program fund employees. The other demands that were raised were all discussed by the Minister of Health in a meeting with them. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, the industrial action has had significant impact on healthcare services. This has resulted in unavailability and delayed in health services delivery amongst the Kenyans. It has compromised the quality of care and equally disrupted. This impact has the potential to contribute to catastrophic health expenditures and adverse health outcomes for the population. Ultimately, the country stands to lose gains made in key health indicators, including maternal health, HIV, TB malaria, and NCDs. From our, uh, from our checks, referral facilities, specialized outpatient services, are significantly affected at 33% and 25% reduction in specialist and outpatient services. So what has the ministry done to, in terms of the crisis that is here? I want to confirm that the ministry has categorized this into three issues. 
short-term measures, which we are already working on it, medium-term measures, and long-term measures. In the short-term measures, the ministry has already posted interns in lines with the SRC advisory. 1,270 diploma clinical officer interns have already been posted and they have reported in their areas of posting. Posting letters for 1,210 medical officers, pharmacists and dental officer interns have been sent to the respective interns and their names have been published in the newspaper to inform them of their places of posting and it is expected that then they start reporting from the 15th of March, which is two days ago. The next cadre of interns, that is the nursing officer degree and clinical officer degree, their posting letters are ready and as we speak, a number have started picking them. The ministry has also requested for 267 million for payment of postgraduate registrar's fees arrears, which was an issue raised by the KMPDU and falls under the purview of the national government. I want to confirm that the ministry has received confirmation from a national treasury of release of 200 million towards payment of the postgraduate registrar fee arrears. The ministry has also requested SRC to advise on the demand by the clinical officers union to have the risk allowance increase. We understand that this is going to have an impact on the overall budget and that is why we have requested SRC to give guidelines. Once SRC gives the guidelines, then the ministry will be in a position to work towards implementation. The ministry has also requested public service commission to review the clinical officers' career progression guidelines so that this can be communicated to them. On the medical laboratory officers, the ministry has already written to the medical laboratory officers informing them of the criteria required for them to be recognized as a union. So we expect that once the medical laboratory officers have met the requirements of a union, then the ministry will go ahead to work towards the recognition agreement that they are pursuing. Under the midterm measures, the Minister of Health is reviewing the internship policy to address aspects of the program, including the need to transit to internship without any delay. As it is now what we are experiencing, the interns who have been out, some have been out for more than a year. And this actually delays them from getting the license that they need to practice. So the ministry is working on a policy. And yesterday we finalized um, internal stakeholders validation. Next week we shall be finalizing on external stakeholder validation. And is to invite the Senate that this is a place that we think that we can during the external stakeholder validation. The ministry is also ready to negotiate on the CBA that is uh, the new CBA because the CBA under KMPDU, it lapsed in 2021. But we are aware that from the Ministry of Labor is that once a CBA la uh, lapses until a new one is signed, that is when it comes into effect. On long-term measures, uh, Speaker and Honourable Members, the Ministry is in the process of developing the Human Resource for Health policy to address all aspects of Human Resource for Health in the country, the entire spectrum of the value chain, from production, supply, internship, regulation, employment, retention and distribution of stock density, skill mix and motivation, productivity and general management. The Ministry is also in the process of fully operationalizing the Kenya Health Human Resource Advisory Council to enable it to execute its mandate. This entails providing the necessary budget, finalization of HR instruments in order to obtain the necessary skills and capacities to execute its mandate. The other measures, uh, Speaker and Honorable Members, is that the conciliation meetings are ongoing as well as the whole of nation ordered by the court. The court case is actually up for mention today and the parties are expected to present the progress on conciliation committee meetings and warner. The court is also expected to determine whether the doctor's strike is protected or not protected. I would like to ask of the members of this house that the ministry is doing its level best to ensure that the HRH matters are handled permanently. So we seek your support. And one of the sticky issues is this internship issue. And this internship issue, speaker and honorable members, 
stems from the reason that we now have very many interns. Previously, we only had one university that was training doctors, University of Nairobi. At the moment, the country has eight universities that is training doctors. Each year, currently, we have over a thousand graduates from the universities. The internship centers have not increased. We remain with the same number. The specialists have not increased in tandem. We remain with the same number. Therefore, the ministry is working on ensuring how do we manage this process from the time that one enters into university. How do we manage it so that by the time they are coming out for internship, the ministry is ready for them. They go through internship. But the biggest question, Speaker and Honorable Members, would be how do we ensure as a country that we actually provide employment to these doctors once they finish their internship? What stands between us and that? is availability of resources. Speaker and honorable members, I submit. Uh, honorable senators, uh, we're now going to allow you to put questions to the CS regarding the statement or any other questions. We, in terms of time management, we have 45 minutes. And I see we have almost 12 or 13 members who want to ask a question. Now, in order of asking the questions, there is a request that um, we first allow members who have not asked any questions this morning, uh, and then we allow the members who have asked. Um, so we are going to proceed that way. Please, Sen Honorable Senators, keep your questions very short. And CS, please, I will also urge you to keep your answers short and precise. Uh, so that we can manage the time and we can, we'll be able to finish in good time. Um, first question is going to go to Senator Agnes Kavindu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question starts from where we stopped before the statement from the CS, and I first of all want to congratulate her uh, she is, she's standing firm on her job as a woman. I congratulate you as a woman. Thank you. As a woman. A woman and a CS, of course. Yes, a woman CS. My question goes to uh, Madam C.S. about uh, Bishop Kyoko Hospital in Machakos. This bishop called me three years ago, complaining to me that uh, they've not been, uh, their monies has not been remitted from NHIF. And Madam C.S., this is a question that is worrying so many of these hospitals because they don't know the fate after uh, the, 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 the other uh, organization takes over NHF. And Madam C.S., I know that you have, uh, you have told us that, that there's money which has been released already, but if you can give us timeline so that even as we talk to them, we can assure them these are the timelines you're going to get your monies. My governor also has really been complaining about uh, remittance from NHF in the hospitals in Machakos, and this goes across the whole country. So if Madam uh, C.S., you can give us timelines, and what else we can uh, beg you to do, Madam C.S., is to see as a mother, as a C.S., as a mother, how to end up this strike of the doctors, because we are losing so many people. We are losing a lot of people in this country because of the, the strike. So if also in the negotiations, I'm, I'm sure you have reached somewhere. Can you tell us something about, you know, the timelines of these doctors going back to work and starting work as usual? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, sir, 
Mr. Mr. Speaker, just on a follow-up on uh, presentation uh, of... Order, order Senators. Present I have a list of the Senators who have asked the question. Uh, Ms. Mr. 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 Speaker. So, so please uh, allow, allow us to proceed. Mr. Speaker, I will allow me to proceed. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like to just follow up question on the doctor's strike. Uh, Madam CS, since you said uh, the government was ready to hire 1,500 medical interns, how many have reported? And what are the terms of engagement with these interns? Because we are being told they wanted 200,000, you are ready to give 70,000 stipend. What are the terms apart from the stipend that you are giving uh, uh, Madam CS? And how many, uh, how many people are on a strike? Is it medical doctors only? Is it morticians? Is it anesthetists? Is it nurses? How many groups are on strike? As we know, because when it started through you, Mr. Speaker, sir, Madam CS, it started only as a doctor strike over internship program. Uh, and on the basis that there was an issue, and update the House, Madam CS, on the issue of collective bargaining agreement between medical doctors and other cadres that we have discussed before. Mr. Madam, Mr. Speaker, I thank you. Thank you. Uh, the third question will be asked by Shakila Abdallah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very, I'll be very brief. My question to the CS is, what will be the fate of NHIF staff after the disbursement of NHIF, the issue is saying they'll be newly employed. Will they be paid their dues for the years they have been working? Because that part is silent from the government. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Madam CS, you can answer the three questions. Thank you, Honorable Speaker and uh, Honorable Members. The question by Senator Kavindu regarding uh, Bishop uh, Kiyoko, I think it's what I have responded to previously, and this is uh, now the faith-based facility, and that uh, the resources that we are receiving, as I did say, we have received a letter from Treasury confirming that we are going to receive the monies. So we await to receive the money and we expect that they will hit our account this week. The National uh, Hospital Insurance Fund is already working to ensure that once we receive the money this week, then from next week, payments should start going out to those claims that have been verified. And uh, regarding uh, the strike and for me to give a definite date as to when the doctors will come back to, will go back to work. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I would like to say that we are now in process of a negotiation. And with an, a negotiation, I am not able to confirm with certainty that then by tomorrow they'll be back to work. Of course, I would like that we finish in the shortest time possible. In fact, I would like that even since the matter is coming up for mention today by the uh, Employment and Labor Relations Court, if out of it then doctors are able to go back to work today, that would be the ideal situation for us as a country. But we are going to put our best foot forward in this negotiation so that we ensure that then we go back to uh, operations soon as possible. On the question raised by uh, Senator Cherarge, I would like to confirm first of all that the medical officers uh, who in turn medical officers are not 1,500 but they are 1,210. This includes medical officers, pharmacists and dentists. But after they went on strike, other cadres joined them. That is the clinical officers who joined the strike and also the laboratory, medical laboratory officers who joined the strike. So as we speak today, we have the medical officers on strike, we have the clinical officers on strike, and we have the laboratory officers on strike. But I would also want to confirm that we have those doctors who have been patriotic enough and they have continued to provide services. They are manning the emergency services. They are manning some of the facilities and we are ensuring continuity of service. We have put in place administrative measures to ensure that at least services are being provided in the health facilities. The issue at hand is the offer that we have given 
And I want to confirm that the ministry, having been constrained by National's Treasury, that we post in terms based on the available resources. The ministry did write to SRC for guidelines. And the guidelines we received from SRC is that the interns ought to get a stipend and not a remuneration. So the stipend that was offered is 70,000 shillings. And that is what we have offered. As I did indicate, the letters have gone out for medical officers and we are going to begin taking stock from tomorrow in terms of those who have reported. But I also want to confirm that 1,270 clinical officers have reported in their duty stations. And also to confirm that it was not just uh, the stipend for, for doctors that was fixed. Equally, the stipend for clinical officers was fixed. In the previous, uh, the clinical officers were earning 15,000 shillings as a stipend for internship. Under the new regulations and guidelines that have been given by SRC, that has been enhanced. And I want to confirm that those clinical officers have reported. What we are waiting, and the letters are out now, uh, nursing officers' degree and clinical officers' degree have started collecting their letters, and the stipend is 50,000 shillings. In terms of uh, payments to the doctors, speaker and honorable members, the conversation of healthcare financing has to be discussed, not just by the Ministry of Health, but the whole government. And I believe that is the wisdom that the Honorable Judge of the Lab, uh, Employment and Labor Relations Court ordered that a whole of nation approach is taken so that we discuss. But as a ministry, we have not sat back. That is why we did bring to this Honorable House the four acts. And from the four acts, we have the Social Health Insurance Act, which in itself is supposed to en uh, enable us to collect resources and use those resources for providing healthcare services. One of the items that is going to be recovered by the resources from the Social Health uh, Act is payment for all human resource for health officers across all cadres. And I really want to thank the nurses who have continued to work to thank the doctors who have continued to work, and to thank all the cadres who have continued to provide services amid this crisis. Speaker and honorable members, I submit. Uh, thank you, CS. Uh, next question will come from Alexander Mundingi. Asanti, for the speaker, Swalangu, Kwasiri Wahafia, Kwanza wasiri wa afya ni asali sana mimi mmoja wale wanaume wana, wana support C, C, CS ama governors wa kina mama wale wafanya kazi nzuri. Pongezi kwa sababu isara ya afya iko na shinde kwa sababu tunajua katika Kenya iko katika devolved katika county government na tunajua county nyingi siko na mambo ya ndeni na mambo ya pending bill. Na umenjaribu sana kurainisha afya Swali langu ni kukuuliza kwa sababu tunajua iko katika county government na ninashtuka sana kuwa MP wale wanafaa watupatie pesa ya kupatia county government ambaye wewe na wewe uweze kupatia county government pesa ipitie hapa ndio anastumu wewe kusema uende nyumbani yangu ndio tuvike hapo wanawasili juu ya ya ndero eh hey, wewe nyamasa nyamasa oda oda kwanja county yako iko na hadi 90 billion nyamasa kwanza niuze swali ni senator wa county anaongea oda senator mio senator alexander oda what's your point of order sifuna Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this is actually very embarrassing for this House. Uh, standing orders require that you put a question to the CS. We are not here to worship the CS. We are not here to worship the CS. Ask a question. You cannot give us stories. If you want to give us stories, go and see the CS in the ministry Thank and you. give us those stories you are giving us here. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, please. Please. Let's hear the Senator. Speaker, order. Order. Mr. Speaker. Let Order, Senators. Mr. Speaker, order. He's on a point of order. Yes, Let I'm us on a hear point of order. Mr. Speaker, we have very few minutes. And this is a critical national discussion and national debate. 
we are not here to kiss people's behinds. We are here to ask critical questions about the doctor's strike. Can you limit the contribution of the senator to a question, Mr. Speaker? Thank you. So, Chair, senator Chair Gay, what's your point of order? Sorry, can I use this? Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm standing under standing order 121 and 122. If you have noticed, Mr. Speaker, today since morning, the Nairobi Senator has an habit of shouting and demeaning members. Mr. Speaker, I would like to request your attention kindly. Kindly. Mr. Speaker, have you noticed since morning the Nairobi Senator has been shouting, belittling, and hurling insults at the members across the aisle, especially on this side, Mr. Speaker. You need to, to reign. It is becoming grossly misconduct. He should be thrown out, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, under, under the Constitution Freedom of Speech, Senator Dr. Ali Muni Mundigi has a right to ask the question they want. Why would, Senator, why would you allow Senator Sifuna to use that parliamentary language by calling us that we are kissing people's behind? We are not. Our, ki our kisses are for somewhere else, Mr. Speaker. We don't kiss anybody's minds, Mr. Speaker. We just say it as it is. He must withdraw the last statement of using unparliamentary order members. Wait, just wait. Mr. Speaker, he must withdraw the unparliamentary language of telling us that we are kissing other people's minds. We know what kisses are meant and where to kiss. We cannot be told by Senator Sfona, Mr. Speaker. Can you call him out of order? Uh, Honourable Senators. Uh, honorable, honorable senators, order, order, Cherargay, order. order. Uh, Senator Sifuna stood on a point of order that uh, Mundigi was wasting time with a long statement instead of asking a question. And uh, I, have to, I have to warn Senator Mundigi, I did make a ruling and I was very clear. When you're given opportunity to ask a question, Go straight to your question and make it short and precise. Uh, Senator Sifuna, can you stop directing the chair? I don't need your assistance. Exactly, you are shouting across the aisle. Two wrongs don't make a right. Uh, Senator Sifuna, I would urge you to withdraw kissing whatever part of the body you had re referred to and make it more parliamentary and withdraw Mr. that Speaker, statement. Luckily for me, I have the full range of the English language. I will withdraw the statement of kissing someone's behind, which is exactly what is happening, and replace it. Replace it. I have withdrawn it. I am withdrawing it. Why? Mr. Speaker, can order, I continue? Order. Can order. Order. Can I order. Proceed, Sifuna. Mr. Speaker, if they don't listen to me, how will, how will they hear it when I'm withdrawing it? Proceed. How will they hear order, when I'm withdrawing order, it? Order, senators. Let, order, order. We cannot proceed like this, senators. Order. How yes, else am I supposed to withdraw? Just how withdraw. many ways are there to withdraw other than the way that I'm withdrawing? Withdraw the Mr. statement. Mr. Speaker, I am going to replace the phrase kissing the behind of this, uh, the CS, which is exactly what they are doing, and replace it. Replace it. Can I hear him? Wait, let's hear him. Replace it. Replace it with massaging. With massaging the CS for health, Mr. Speaker. Because that's what they are doing. Okay. Senators, senators. Senators, senators, senators. Senators, I have Oruoba, Oruoba. Gloria. Order, senators. Order, senators. Order, senators. We cannot know. I'm not going to give any more points of orders because we are not listening to each other. Order, senators. He withdrew. He withdrew, Cherarge. He withdrew. Order, senators. Or senators. Senators, order. Order, Senators. 
Cherarge, I will start by throwing you out. Order. Order. I was listening. You were not listening. Senator, I will throw you out. You, we are not listening to each other, senators. Cherarge, you were not listening to Sifuna when he said he is withdrawn that statement. And he, has, he has the right to replace it. It needs to make a sense. Order. Order. The ruling. Order. Senators. You want us to proceed, senators. I'm not engaging you, Cherarge, in an exchange. I asked him to withdraw, and he withdrew. So can we proceed, senators? Let us proceed. The matter was la parliamentary language. The issue was parliamentary language. Gloria, what is your point of order? But, senators, Mr. I will Speaker. not... Mr. One Speaker. moment, Gloria. Gloria, one moment. I will not allow a point of order if we are not, we're not going to engage ourselves in proper manners, okay? Let us agree. If you have a point of order, press your intervention button, and I'll give you an opportunity. But shouting at each other across the aisle and shouting at the chair will not be entertained. Gloria, what is your point of order? Mr. Speaker, under, under Standing Order 122B, Mr. Speaker, uh, and let me read it, eh? Gross Disorderly Conduct 122B, declines to retract use of an parliamentary language or declines to offer apologies, despite having been ordered to do so by the Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, for me today, and the reason I, am, I want to bring this to your attention, Mr. Speaker, we have had cabinet secretaries coming even today, and I have not had this language being referenced to our Minister of, of Defense. But Mr. Speaker, when a woman comes here, we have Nairobi Senator starting to throw words and, and, and demean women leaders, because Mr. Speaker, what Senator Sifuna is doing is belittling the women in this house and our women leaders. He must withdraw and apologize profusely because when you see women, you cannot just be thinking about sexual references, such as kissing people's behinds, Mr. Speaker. This is completely out of order. And Senator Sifuna must not only apologize to this house, but to the women of Nairobi and to the women of Kenya. We are tired. Apologize and withdraw. No, Senators, I want to put this matter to rest so that we can continue to ask the question. Senators, Senators, order. As the chair, I asked Senator Sifuna to withdraw the statement he made about whatever he said, about kissing the behind. And Senator Sifuna did exactly that. He withdrew. He retracted that statement, and he retracted it. Just a moment, Gerard Gay. You know, we cannot continue like this, seriously. <laughs> Senator Sifuna retracted that statement to my satisfaction as the chair. Okay? Now, if you're going to make another point of order, which is not touching on parliamentary language that Sifuna used, I would have listened to you. But we are going about the same issue that, he ra that was raised and was, re was withdrawn. So, Senators, we put this matter to rest, and we, are, we go to the next question. Senator Cheriot, there is nobody... Order, Mundingi. Mundingi. Senator Mundingi, if you had used the opportunity I gave you to ask the question, you would have asked by it. Now it's, you've been overtaken. Uh, Senator. Now it seems 
Oh, Senator Professor Margaret Kamar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. May I take the first opportunity to thank the... Mr. Speaker, can you... Sifuna, can, can we hear the in professor silence? in silent? Thank You're protected, you. Senator. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the minister for a good response, and I want to thank her for talking to the country and bringing some uh, comfort, because we have all been very concerned about what's going on. Um, Mr. Speaker, could the minister assure us and the country that the current negotiations will not stop again. Because we reached a point when the medical doctors, the striking doctors as we call them, reached a point when they were saying it is the government that is on strike, it's not us that are on strike. There was a point also that we witnessed the negotiating side of the government working out because negotiations are negotiations. So long as the unions are here, negotiations must take place. Can we get an assurance that there will be no walking out until this is done from the minister? Secondly, the issue of risk allowance, Mr. Speaker, is something that has been on for many years. Why is it taking very long, and yet CRC was part of the All of Nation Approach Committee? Why wouldn't it have been discussed alongside that so that we don't have this delay? The problem, Mr. Speaker, is that people have died. And I think the minister knows that people have died. People are suffering as we are talking. People have had to go for ex ex very expensive alternatives. Why would we be dealing with an issue called risk allowance, which was done in the 90s? It was not even in the year 2000, it was before, when this idea of risk allowance which was going on in other countries were negotiated. Why would it not be done? So, finally... Uh, Senator, just... Two. You've asked two questions. Thank That's you. more than enough. Senator Veronica Duarte. Hey, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, and you have put to rest the uh, points of order, otherwise I would have uh, maybe advised my colleague, Senator Sifuna, on the meaning of common parlance of English language and how you cannot retract and then reinstate the statement in different words. Mr. Speaker, I will now go straight to the questions. I will, I will go straight to the question to the Honorable CS. Once again, welcome to Senate. And as you very well know, healthcare remains a critical pillar to the welfare of our nation. And ideally, it should enjoy budgetary priority in resource allocation. So, Honorable Cabinet Secretary, uh, Kenyans are very concerned about how prepared the ministry is in managing the transition from NHIF to SHIF without exposing and while avoiding any gaps that may expose the Kenyan population who require health care on a daily basis. And question number two, so how prepared is the ministry in managing that transition? Number two, uh, you know it is women who give birth. Linda Mama program seemed to have enjoyed a lot of popularity and is a program that was acclaimed and approved. Within the SHIF uh, framework, the new framework, what is the ministry doing to design a specific program to Linda Mama, specifically that woman who is pregnant, for prenatal, labor, and childbirth, and postnatal care without limiting those visits to two or four but to Linda Mama, in as much as they require that postnatal care until the mother and the baby are both safe in the ministry and within the public hospitals that we have in Kenya. The third question will be asked by Senator Hamida Kebwana. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Madam CS, I've just been wondering, actually the morgues are full now. The patients are not being attended to. They are not attending to the patients and they are dying. Does the government realize that this is a matter of life and death? How long will this go on, seriously? So we should continue losing lives just for the government to have its own time to honor the CBA? I, I think, seriously, it pains. It really hurts. Uh, number two, <clears throat> we've also realized that maybe once the interns are back, uh, the interns are sent uh, in, uh, to work in facilities and super. Now, this is, of course, risky. Without any uh, personal, uh, whatever, professionals being around, I, I'm wondering, um, we are talking about deaths, we are talking about interns also who are unsupervised. I don't know how this issue is going to be tackled, but please, our people are dying, Madam CS. Kindly do something. Thank you. CS. Thank you, Honorable Speaker and uh, Honorable Members. I'll uh, begin from the question of Senator Professor Kamar, that uh, the KMPDU has alluded to the government being on strike. And they have explained that this is because the CBA was not implemented from 2017 to date. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, the CBA that was signed had several aspects. And in my earlier submission, we have put those matters into the different areas that need to take responsibility. We have matters for the national government. We have matters that are cross-cutting. We have matters of county government. Speaker and Honourable Members, I want to confirm that of the six issues that pertain to the national government, we have addressed them. The issue of postgraduate uh, uh, fee arrears, that has been addressed with the release of 200 million from National Treasury for payment. The issue of basic salary arrears within the CBA. As for the doctors who work within the national government, that aspect has been met. And in fact, there is an overpayment. And now the government is asking, what do we do with the overpayment of the arrears to the doctors? The issue of CBA between KMPDU and Kenyatta National Hospital was waiting concurrence from Salary and Remuneration Commission. That has already been done. The issue of CBA between Moi Teaching Referral Hospital and KMPDU, that has already been finalized. It was a matter in court, and a decision was already passed. The issue of CBA between Kenyatta University Teaching and Research Hospital and KMPDU, the CBA is now ready. Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hospital has called the unions to go and discuss and negotiate on the CBA. So, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, on matters pertaining to the national government, progress has been made. The only sticky issue is the stipend. And Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I want to ask of this House that as for that stipend, we are asking that if the interns and should they accept that, then they open room for negotiation that government has offered. They have not come to the table to tell us that, no, we will not take that, we want this. That must be allowed to happen. Uh, Professor Kamar, on the issue of government walking out during the discussion, I was in that meeting, and I want to confirm that the government did not walk out. The meeting adjourned. Why did the meeting adjourn? Because we were following the orders of the judge from the court. And the judge ordered that the doctors should suspend the strike for negotiations to proceed. And that is what we were asking of the doctors. Suspend the strike, negotiations to proceed. And I want to confirm to the House that negotiations will be good. Negotiations will be done, in fact, 
accelerated if we have no people dying out of this strike. They will be accelerated if the doctors are at the bedside of the patients. The risk allowance, I want to clarify, on the issues raised by KMPDU, risk allowance does not arise. The people who raise the issue on risk allowance is the clinical officers. And they are saying they want the risk allowance to be enhanced from 3,000 shillings per month to 15,000 shillings per month. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, that is 500% increase in the risk allowance. That is an issue of budget. Once we get SRC guidelines, if that is possible, then we have it for consideration. And once the House, the National Assembly approves our budget, exchequer is released, we shall be able to meet that. Because we know that whatever they are doing is risky and indeed they deserve risk allowance. So the issue is the movement from 3,000, 15,000, the 500% increase. If SRC confirms that that is in order, then we'll put measures in place for resources to be put together for that. The issue raised by Honorable Senator Veronica. Earlier, I have spoken about the transition from NHIF to Social Health Authority. As a ministry, we have done our best. And that is why we put together a transitional committee, a committee of experts to guide the process. And as I did report earlier, there is a roadmap and we meet after every two weeks and we are satisfied with the progress that is going to be a smooth transition and no patient should actually notice that there was a change. It should be a seamless transition. On the issue of Linda Mama, I want to confirm as a mother myself and probably aspiring to get another child, maternal health <laughs> is of importance to me. So I will not be the one to preside over a situation where maternal health is not covered by this country. And I want to confirm that in the social health authority, reproductive health has been covered under the benefit package. In fact, it is an expanded package from what was there under Linda Mama. So let's not be stuck on the name of Linda Mama. Let us be concerned about what is it that they were getting then and what is it that they are getting in the new one. And I confirm that it's expanded and the benefits are expanded. On the question raised by Senator Hamida regarding the government and the ministry, whether we know the situation. Yes, Senator, we indeed know the situation. On a daily basis, we are tracking what the situation looks like. We have developed a tool that is being filled by the county governments. We have developed a tool that is being filled by the national referral hospitals, whom we have 100% control over. And for the weeks that the strike has progressed, I want to confirm that in our teaching and referral hospitals, Moi Teaching and Referral Hospitals has recorded the highest increase in the number of medical officers who have gone back to work based on the administrative measures that we have put in place. But also take responsibility that in Kenyatta, we have an issue because the registrars have not gone back to work. And registrars are people who are now doing their postgraduate training. We have government sponsored and private sponsored. Those are the people that we are talking to so that they can get back to work and be able to carry on with what they have been doing. So we do understand as a ministry the gravity of this matter. And that is why on a daily basis nowadays, for the last three days I think, we have been in meetings till midnight to find a solution to this issue. And as I have said, this solution will not just come from the Ministry of Health. It will come from the whole of nation approach and the ministry being able to implement what will have been agreed on. I have also said that we expect a ruling from the court today. The mention is happening today. But the judge in his wisdom already ordered the doctors to suspend the strike. I want to plead with the doctors that if they respect the court orders and suspend the strike, they will create a very good environment of being listened to and even the government also moving forward so that we meet somewhere with the doctors. Regarding internship centers, I want to confirm that as a ministry, we have a criteria that is used to determine what centers become internship centers. There must be existence of specialists who will supervise the interns. There must be existence of equipment that the interns will use. There must be existence of commodities for the interns to use. And that's why we are saying we want to take time and ensure that this matter is resolved for once. Because we have 85 
uh, internship centers in the country. 65 of them are in public hospitals. So as a ministry, we have at least ensured that the commodity aspect is taken care of. The equipment aspect, we are working on it. And now, what was remaining is to ensure that there are specialists there, but to confirm that we have a number that should be able to supervise the internship. Speaker and honorable members, I would like to say as well that this is a shared function devolved. So the county governments have their responsibility to take, the governors to take in this matter, where the union has raised specific issues with them, we expect that the governors should handle those issues. The issues that have been raised to the national government, I have confirmed to this house that indeed we have handled them. Speaker and honorable members, I submit. Thank you. Thank you, CS. Uh, Senator George Mbogwa. And please be very brief. Okay, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Madam CS, I have a simple question to you. From where you sit, uh, due to the importance of the complex nature of this sector, do you think it's time the country start a conversation of transferring the human resource of health from the county government and the creation of a health service commission so that we can have order in this uh, sector? Thank you. Senator Beatrice Ogola. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, my question, the first one is, uh, Madam Asias, what is the, first, the fate of the UHC staff uh, whose contract ended, taking into consideration that as a nation we are looking at achieving universal health? On the, on the strike, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to say that negotiations need goodwill uh, from both parties. Even the language we use when we are negotiating is very important. I realized the CS at some point uh, was uh, giving a statement that was kind of running away from the whole challenge. Like when you say only this number belong to the national government, it is like saying somebody else uh, should be uh, solving it. But the buck stops with uh, you and the buck stops with the head of state. Uh, I do not understand why, as a nation, uh, we are so, it is so easy to give uh, um, uh, foreigners or other people good packages. I remember sometimes back when we were engaging the Cuban doctors, Senator, a lot was given Senator, to them. Senator, get to your question, please. Why is it difficult to attend to the doctor's need when we could give the Cuban doctors a lot of leeway? Thank you, Senator. Uh, you also said Senator, you that can only ask they have not question. come to us. Senator Beatrice. Yes, Speaker. You've, you've asked two questions. Senator Beatrice. Thank you. More fire. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. My question is on uh, Marimant Level 4 Hospital, which is in Raganidi County. This is the only facility in the entire eastern part of the Raganidi County, which serves quite a number of uh, 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 catchments, including Ukambani, part of Kabani. This hospital, Madam says, lacks some very essential machines, including the CT scan, uh, the renal unit equipment, and the mammogram. Honorable Madam says, what is the ministry doing to make sure that this facility is equipped so that we can get people having services that are required, considering that this is the only facility. Uh, currently, we are about to graduate, these, these facilities are about to graduate into a level five hospital, and uh, quite a number of nurses are taking rotational uh, courses there. What is your ministry doing to make sure that the Marimanti Hospital is being equipped with the necessary machines as required? Thank you, Senator. CS, please respond. Thank you, Honorable Speaker and uh, Honorable Members. The question raised by Senator Mbugwa, whether it is a high time for there to be a health commission. Uh, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I take note that this is the house that is the defender of devolution. This is the house that is supposed to ring fence and take care of devolved function. Having a health commission would be ideal, but that process would be outside the mandate of the Ministry of Health. Constitutional question. So since the conversation is ongoing, and if everyone believes that then that is the direction to be taken, then 
we as a ministry are happy that then the process of having a health commission through a constitutional process is then started so that then that is achieved. On the issues raised by Senator Beatrice, I do understand your concern regarding the language of discussion. I take responsibility if I have sounded like uh, I am not using the, light, the, the right language, but at times it becomes difficult when you want to give the real numbers, which, for example, when we speak about clinical officers, of the 14,000 clinical officers in service, 158 belong to the national government, and that is under my ampit. So that is to say that then the conversation needs to go beyond the, uh, the Ministry of Health and go to the governors, so that then they are able to take care of the remainder balance of the clinical officers. Regarding the Cuban doctors, I would like to confirm, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, that we, when we came into the office, we looked at the contract that was there, and for sure, it was not uh, competitive enough, it was not sustainable for the government to continue with that program, and we did terminate the program of Cuban doctors, and they went back to Cuba. CS, yes, I'll just interrupt you. Uh, it's already one o'clock. I will give you one minute to answer the question for more fire so that we can rise okay. as a house. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker and Honorable Members. On the question by Senator Gataya, I would like to confirm, Senator, that I have personally been to Marimanti Level 4 Hospital, and we were there to look at what are the needs, because we had received a request from the governor regarding elevation of that facility. And we did agree that we do not want just to elevate and call it level five for a name. We have to ensure that it has the equipment, it has the HRH, and it has all other items that are required for its lifting. So we are in discussion with the county government to see how we support it to get the much needed equipment so that once then it meets the criteria, it can be moved to level five. Speaker and honorable members, I submit, thank you very much. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Health, for appearing today. Honorable Senators, it is now 1.01 p.m. and having concluded the business for which I extend the hours of sitting, pursuant to Standing Order 342A, the Senate stands adjourned until today, Wednesday 17th, April 2024, at 2.30 p.m.